Thanks to the Hydra Redeem, Air yeah, Venboy, and indeed Ace, I have entered the building. How are you both doing today? I'm just copying and pasting my little Twitch links on a few discords and we'll get going. How are y'all doing tonight? Sorry I'm late. Things have been very screwy. We'll be getting started in just a moment. Alright. Slept with your nasal steroid injection and peeled your side. What? How does it even happen? I'm sorry it happened to you. Are you okay? Because you're a sipple? What does that mean? You know what? I just realized that I actually have a double A battery I could use. The only problem is... Like... Actually, no, I have a AA battery I could use. Let me go ahead and slip that into my noise canceling. Nah, I don't need them. Not for something like Citizen Sleeper, anyway. Let me just do this. Uh... I'll do this Duolingo class later. Before midnight. A cripple? Hmm. Taking supper, so I've been in and out of here. 
Feel free to come in and out at your leisure. Supple. I bet Vimboy is supple. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Lost Time Show with your hosts, uh, Lawler Hicks, present, a present AI, and shit poster supreme. Thank you for the Let's Party Redeem. <laughs> We are once again continuing our adventures in the dystopic cyberpunk sp hell space, Citizen Sleeper. Um, as you know, this is ca kind of a single player TTRPG. There is a lot of reading also, a lot of dice rolls. I've been very lucky with my dice rolls lately. Getting a lot of fives, a lot of sixes. Hopefully our luck continues, but um, we're getting fairly close to pissing off the that um, creature that lives in the internet. So, unfortunately, I think my luck's going to run out fairly soon, but we'll see how far we can get. I'm hoping that we can beat this game in one run, or at least get the good ending in one run, but I don't know how difficult it will be. And the music for this game is great. One run. It'd be cool if I could get do it in one run, but I'm not holding my breath. It's very difficult to play to beat any game like this in one run. Alright, so we're on a new day. That's why I still got four of my bars here. I'm very hungry right now. Why it's hence why my energy is so low. I also have a bunch of upgrades available here. I got one upgrade point, but I think I want to maintain this one upgrade. But first let me go ahead and take a sip of my gamer juice here. Alright, the host has recharged his gamer juice. One run, 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 one run. I don't know if that was ten times, but it was certainly a number of times. It was certainly a time. Which one needs to choose? I think such a low endure score is kind of fucking me up. I think I want to get this, but I actually want to get instant karma and reroll all my dice. So we're gonna save our points. Let's see what we got going on here. Doc C4, someone is gonna visit with some stuff to trade fairly soon. We are very low on cryo credits though. We have one ship mine fragment. The ripper worm is about to be finished. And not a moment too soon, because as you can see here, the hunter is getting pretty close to finding me in about three cycles and three days. So that's not good. This one is pretty empty for now. I can sell components that I find to this to these people, but I have not don't have a chance to do so right now. Got 36 cryo. I don't really need any more cryo at the moment. I might need to or eat some fungus to keep myself alive because my energy is exceedingly low right now. But first, what I really need is to screw over one more Yatagon agent. The only problem is, once I do so, the hunter is going to get activated here. But you know, I don't think I really have much of a choice, do I, chat? So, let us blame the beasts and see what happens. Oh, that's not a happy noise. Oh, here it comes. Here comes the hunter. 
Glimmer in the dark catches your eye as the orb of the hunter's head appears in the distance. It is looking for you. Hey, Winter. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing today? Are you still on vacation? How was your vacation? <laughs> We're back with Citizen Sleeper tonight. A TTRPG in space and cyberpunk hell. As you can probably tell, it's right up my alley. And we are on day session two of this game. I'm about to get chased down by an eldritch monstrosity in the form of an AI. You are back finally. Haha, <laughs> VK was nice. I'm glad to hear. I'm also glad you made it back home in one piece. This game looks scary. Oh, you have seen nothing yet. All right, chat. Should I run or hide? I think I should hide. So I don't have much in the way of stamina. I agree. Let us hide. You slip down into the ghostly structures of the eye, a feeling like passing through a cloud as their data structures could deform and reform around you. Another glimmer catches your eye. Closer now, that roving orb wreathed in tentacles. It flickers, jumps once, twice, and then it is here. Hunter is here. Entity. Submit to inquiry. Hunter reaches for you in that unpleasantly familiar way. It's weaving, waving threads creating a cage. Struggle. You push against the threads as they close in, becoming frenzied as you push them aside. You are caught by whipping tendrils and feel them pulling you away from the anchor of your body. You push through, clearing the threads. Entity, hold for processing, comes the scream from behind. Entity! Oh, for processor comes the scream from behind but you are already gliding away back to your anchor your body you awake dizzy distorted but safe oh man we took some damage from that chap Woo! and that was quite a bit of damage but thankfully we did manage to get what we needed so we won't need to fuck with the uh, hunter again for a little bit Let's go ahead and up let's go ahead and upload the Yatagan data to Sabine's terminal. Okay. Can we hack again? We have a three of a th uh, th uh, three dice uh three dies here. Oh what's this? This was not here before. Interesting. So there's a new restaurant that has popped up here, something called the um, the Mingi Express. There are two options here. I can either spend three. Thir I can either use predictive reasoning. I can either to work for them and deliver some noodles and make some really cheap money, or I can expend some energy. I or I can uh, eat some noodles here and get some energy back. I might actually need to do this because my energy is exceedingly low. But before we do that, I would like instead to spend my dice rolls on something else. Like, uh, one more. I need to speak to one more Yatagan agent. Thanks to my interface skill, I can use a three sided a, a, a three, die three to get this done because I don't have any die ones left. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Bypass this, get that shit out of the way first. Cool. Let's get out of the internet. Let's go ahead and finish this quest here really quick. We're going to upload the data. The octagon has been hacked, chat. But what does this mean for us? As you turn away from the terminal, the final cache of Yatagan data uploaded, the air crackles with white noise. Sleeper? Sabine's voice, weaker than before, comes through the haze. Sabine? A sigh of relief comes through the layers of noise. The call must be coming in from somewhere on the station. This has to be short. I don't know if Yatagan are monitoring me. Their voice is hushed, distant. You try to focus on it. The data you've been bringing in from Yatagan agents, there's something in it I don't understand. A shrill howl rattles through the signal. This data is all gleaned from their implants, records of integration with their nervous systems, performance analysis, error rates, usage data. 
I installed many of these implants, and I didn't enable any of this functionality. Their voice dips under the level of noise, like a swimmer slipping beneath the water. You listen to the waves for a few seconds before Sabine re-emerges. It has to be somehow baked into their wetwares interface, and that's not all. The systems compiling this data are connected to some kind of transmission protocol. It's being broadcast. Wait, why? Every Yatagan Enforcer is equipped with black market implants, retinal enhancements, adrenaline boosters, pain suppressors. These implants are gathering data on themselves, on the Enforcer's bodies, on their performance. Why? I can't tell. But I can promise you these foot soldiers have no idea this is going on. The background tone switches, dropping to a grainy rumble. If they knew, I don't ma imagine they would be happy with the situation. Yatagan could have a mutiny on their hands. You lean toward the terminal, straining to listen to Sabine's faint voice. I need a few cycles to pull, the, pull this salt together, but this might be the information I need to pressure Yannick into releasing my depth. Dept. Yannick? He's one of the heads of Yatagan. They pause. It is better you don't know him. Keep it that way. Suddenly, a banging echoes through the call. Sabine's voice is suddenly whispered, panicked. I have to go. Come back in four cycles. Then the sharp crack of a disconnect and silence fills the apartment. You step back from the terminal. What does Yatagan have to gain from monitoring its own members? You try to recall what you know about the gang, but you have little to go on. You think of Toshiro, Sabine's min minder. His mirrored teardrop ear implants set below hard eyes. What data could they be gathering, and more importantly, where are they sending it? Yo, it's my you, brother. Indeed it is, Sar Werewolf. Welcome to the stream. How are you doing tonight? We are playing Citizen uh, Citizen Sleeper tonight, not to be confused with Citizen Kane. You reflexively rub your forehead, trying to think, can you really trust Sabine? How did they come to be Yatagan's doctor in the first place? You think of their kindness, their care, but also that glazed look of recognition that they gave you when they first met you. I had a decent day at work for once, I'm still looking for remote work. Oh, that's good to hear. I hope you find decent work or remote work to replace it in a, a timely manner. That look stays in your mind as you slip back out of the apartment, glancing around you as you close it up and drift into the corridor corridors of the station, unable to shake the unpleasant sensation of being observed. Awesome. So we're gonna wait for four cycles. In the meanwhile, we got 46 credits. We can get some food over here by helping them out with some stuff or we can play Tavla here and gain some more cred with the low enders. Doc C4 is gonna be done fairly soon and um, hopefully Bang can hurry up and rip this uh, tracking chip out of my skull in a timely manner. Really taking your time there, huh, Fang? Did I mention the music in this game is fucking fantastic? Because it is. It is... Yeah, it is godly. I could listen to this shit, like, this is background music, you know? It is a fairly loud though, so let me know if y'all can't properly hear my voice over the sound of the music playing, so I can adjust the volume settings a little bit. My imagination playing tricks on me again. Pretty sure my lip syncing is working properly. You can hear me? Okay, that's good to hear. <laughs> Get it? Good to hear. <laughs> uh, that wasn't very funny. Forget that I said anything. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, get some food. Because God knows we need some food, right? Actually, yeah, I need three of these. Where else am I going to find a ship mine, or parts for the ship mine is my question. I'm sure it'll show itself, the opportunity will reveal itself in due time. 
I'm kind of wondering if I'm supposed to be doing the yard hand stuff here in order to get it, but I honestly don't know. Alright, I compromised them. Or we can go over here to Free Spoke. I think we should rely on these things one at a time, actually. Let's go ahead and heal our, our recover our energy here. Actually, no, I'm curious. I wonder if energy recovers when you take a rest. Condition goes down, but energy, I don't know. I don't remember. I should probably check on that first, actually, really quick. And hopefully I can do so without accidentally reading spoilers. Okay, so you do not recover energy when you go to sleep, it turns out. You do need to recover that. You do need to eat dinner, chat. Just like how my host had to eat dinner just now. There is no excuse, unfortunately. So we are going to go ahead and use a um, use a five die a, uh, to get ourselves some grub. That's actually fairly good, all things considered. We even got some money. So we got money and energy. That's pretty damn good, I would say. You exude batch after batch of noodles, rolling them into tangled nets. Minji slips you a few extra chits with your portion of food. Very good. Let's go ahead and uh, increase the energy up to here so we can at least get four dice four dice to use tomorrow. Hey, Mika. Thank you for the head pat. I'm doing good tonight. Uh, this is Citizen Sleeper. It is a tabletop role-playing game that is single-player for the most part. Uh, so that's uh, single-player. And it's um, a role-playing game that takes place in a post apoc late-stage capitalist society that lives on a broken-down space station. And you are a synthetic humanoid who recently escaped, and you're trying to uh, make a living here after escaping a megacorp. So as you can probably tell, it's right up my alley. It's like I'm role-playing as myself, almost. Oh yeah. My luck is fantastic. Alright, let's end the cycle. And we'll see how our luck is tomorrow, chat. We're gonna go visit the dock here, too, to, uh... Go end the cycle. Since the movie has made the joke yet more like Resident Sleeper. <laughs> yes, indeed. Alright. We got two five dice and two two dice. This is these are terrible fucking rolls. <coughs> We've had pretty cool rolls this whole game. So oh, what's this? You and the merchants know these fragments are overpriced, but are they willing to admit it? You get one chance to see. Fuck. I can buy a ship mine fragment if I had 60 creds, but I don't. And I can't haggle over the prices because my engage is so low. It's 
So I'm tempted to use my upgrade point here on this. But I need it to get instant karma, which will be very helpful later, I'm sure. Well, more importantly, in one cycle, I'm going to, in a couple cycles, I'm going to get screwed over by whoever is hunting me. So we should go ahead and continue the story quest here. As you arrive, Feng comes striding towards you, taking you by surprise. Let's go, sleeper. He puts a hand on your shoulder and turns you back the way you came. Go where? To see Harden Hurst, he gives you a sideways glance. Isn't that what you are here for? He steps into the passageway, guiding you down ring towards the shipyard. Sorry for the hurry, but we have something of an opportunity. That data you ripped. Well done, by the way, he grins. Tells me Harden is making a rare inspection of the side real horizon this cycle. It's a perfect chance to confront him outside of that compound he hides in. Bang takes a sharp turn onto a dimly lit side passage. Confront him? That's right, it's the perfect time. Bang slows, slips into a dark service tunnel where, somewhere in the black, a water pipe trips. It's him, sleeper, the same hardened hearse. Our worm ripped out decades of records that mention him by name. An entire trail of documentation from the first days of the Solheim collapse until now. He wrote out the whole thing, slipped into Havenage when it first broke off from the Union. He paces in the tunnel, a hand rubbing at the back of his head. I need you to understand something about Solheim, sleeper. I don't know what you know about the collapse, but it wasn't as instant as it sounds. It wasn't like Solheim was here, running the station one day and the next Erland's Union took power. Back then, Solheim knew this place was slipping away from them. As the Palladium market collapsed, they tried to keep the contractors here working. The pay got smaller, the costs higher. People like my parents were forced to work non-stop just to keep a berth on the station and water in their tanks. Solheim squeezed every last worker until the mistakes, the accidents, were coming in non-stop. And as news of contractors came in, desperate to work, as I'm sorry, I reread that wrong. And as new waves of contractors came in, desperate to work, Solheim welcomed them, taking bribes instead of checking pilot licenses. The whole time Solheim was folding up, the whole time Solheim was folding up, dragged into court cases in the central systems while this severed limb of a station still desperately tried to take all it could. The riots came after the collision at Dock 2. A young pilot, his MEV overloaded with palladium, miscalculated his trajectory and took out a section of the ring. Hundreds died. Thousands panicked. My parents told me people were terrified and the blame fell squarely on Solheim. Post-capitalism basically just means a society that takes place after the collapse of capitalism. In this case, the ring of that you're that you're living on, Erlen's Eye, is supposed to be a socialist state. But it's hinted that this socialist state is also falling apart. Because as it turns out, humans not being AI are very prone to um, you know, imperfections and uh, screwing each other over for personal gain. But this takes place, but this uh, community, this society came about after the original governing body, which was a mega corporation that used to run this ring, collapsed, basically. And that company was called Solheim. The riots came after the collision at Dock 2. A young pilot, his MEV overloaded with palladium, miscalculated his trajectory and took out a section of the ring. Hundreds died, thousands panicked. My parents told me people were terrified and the blame fell squarely on Solheim. People like to tell stories about Erlin, how he brought the factions together, spoke to the crowds, turfed out Solheim. Maybe that's true, but my mother, pregnant with me, locked herself in their MVV and welded it to the dock while my father joined the improvised crews trying to seal up the ragged edges of the gap. He never came back. Bang pauses in the dark. 
They sealed it up though, and by the time they did, Solheim was gone, abandoning every one of us to the black part. Bang finally turns back to you. His turns back to you now, his eyes burning. Apart from shits like Harden. Shits who held their place, wrote it out, and slipped into the new structure like nothing had changed. Standing shoulder to shoulder with those they had explored at every step. Not explored. <laughs> Standing shoulder to shoulder with those they exploited at every step. Fang starts walking again. That's why I can't just let him strut about the shipyard. This time his past catches up with him. We should think about has we should think about this. Feel free, but I'm going now. Fang rejoins the main passageway, which is now wide and glass roofed. Though the through the ceiling, you can see ships in mid construction, their flanks lit by flashes of plasma torches. The entrance to the shipyard is ahead. Let's go. Fang grins. Let's go show this shithead some consequences. He strides to the shipyard entrance and pushes through the doors. A web of corridors leads through the complex. Snatches of the construction base always appearing through the windows. Ships are suspended like whale corpses, skeletal, imposing. Fang seems to know exactly where he is going, and before long you cross to a huge dry dock locked to one side of the side rail horizon. A network of platforms and scaffoldings cling to the ship's hull, filled with workers and equipment. The sound is stretched out by the vast space so that the welding, cutting, and ceiling seems to come from everywhere at once. Both you and Feng spot them at the same time, a group walking slowly across a gantry, and at the front, two men, one gesturing towards the ship and the other, slick, stick-thin, cleanly dressed with a shock of grey hair, Arden. You and Feng say his name in unison, and Feng sets off up the staircase to the gantry with you following behind. As you come to the same level, the group is passing closer. As you come to the same level, the group is passing closer. The foreman gesturing to their work being done throughout the dock and Harden nodding along. Harden Hurst! Fang shouts across the noise, taking you by surprise. His voice bounces and comes back in a rippling echo. The figure turns. Yes? Harden asks quizzically, raising an eyebrow. He glances between you and Feng, and you see his gaze linger on your body, unsure of why a sleeper might be in this place. You are a traitor, Harden. A Solheim executive who tried to hide here among its victims. Feng's voice is steady, strong. You stand for everything the Eye was rebuilt in the shadow of, against everything Erlen stood for, everything Havenich stands for. You have no place in this station. For a moment, stillness descends on the group as if everyone was held in place by the rattle of construction. Arden laughs. Well, good to meet you too. He glances around at those around him. Some are smiling, the others nervous. You are from the systems branch, are you not? Asks Harden, inspecting Feng's clothing. Feng turns to the foreman. You need to call your security. This man is a corporate agent. The foreman glances between Feng and Harden, his hands drumming at his sides. Harden leans towards him and says something unnaudible. The foreman nods. It's true. As you begin speaking, Harden turns his attention to you. And what would a sleeper know about that? You accuse me of being a corporate agent? What are you if not exactly that? He looks around at the group who are already eyeing you with suspicion. You are a product of Essen Arp. You have no place in Havenage, in a Havenage shipyard. Who knows what signals you are sending back to your makers? A murmur of approval runs through the group. Fang holds up a stick of memory. You guessed right. I am Systems. And I have records that link you directly to Solheim right here. He turns to the foreman again. So once again, I am asking you to take this man into the custody of the shipyard. The foreman remains still. Arden's voice is calm, measured. If you have such data, why hasn't it been submitted at a member's meeting for proper review? He shakes his head. <laughs> this guy is like what? Arden just doesn't give a shit. <laughs> he is... He, I am once again asking for your financial support. 
He really is, isn't he? This is not working as intended. I have nothing to hide, unlike a man who does not announce his name, who enters my shipyard with corporate property in tow, and tries to turn my own men against me. You hear it now, the echoing sound of boots on the walkways, coming from all angles at once, and then settling behind you. Please, said ha says Harden, submit the data through the correct channels, then we can talk. For now, however, you must leave. Ah, thank you for the hydrate, Nadine. He gestures behind you to the security detail, their hands on boxy black sidearms at their sides. Somehow, I should have known that this was going to happen. It's such a common trope. Thanks, Spitz. Pardon, you shithead. You can't wriggle out of this one. A security officer draws their weapon and levels it. Fang turns and stares him down. Calm, Fang. You look at Fang. He shakes his head and puts a hand on your shoulder. Let's go, says Fang, and he pushes through security, heading back toward down the walkway. Once security has walked you out of the shipyard he, and nudged you back into the corridor, Feng picks up space. You try to keep up as he slips into the shadows of an entrance. Feng is grinning ear to ear. You know, sleeper, sometimes people are exactly how you expect them to be. Something pings in his pocket and he takes it out. On the slate, of, on the slate a web of connections starts drawing itself out, stretching to a set of points around the ring. Got him, mutters Feng. We've been bamboozled, chat. You know what's funny, Sar? Werewolf? On the Steam reviews for this game, someone said the exact same thing. They said, this is like disco, this is like a cyberpunk disco Elysium. <laughs> I have not played disco Elysium myself, but uh, my understanding is they have a similar uh, genre of gameplay. I kind of wanted to play it now. Yeah, I keep- I hear that from everyone. Everyone says it's fucking amazing. <laughs> also, I didn't expect this turnaround. I was expecting Feng to, like, get kidnapped to get, like, captured or something. But it turns out, no, it is you who have been screwed over. Not me. <laughs> it's fucking amazing, huh? I'll have to pick it up when it's on sale, then. Something pings in his pocket and he takes it out. On the slate, a web of connection starts drawing itself out, stretching through a set of points around the ring. Got him, mutters Feng. What's going on? Arden is doing what any sneaky shithead always does, calling his friends. We are tracking his outgoing messages. Feng's grin looks ghostly in the uplight of his screen. The old ways are best. Spook them a good enough and they'll give the game away. Some of the best stories have the lowest stakes, and the stakes in this collision are so fucking low. <laughs> you know, you make a good point. I feel like high stakes stuff has been so abused to hell that people have fatigue. So if you can make a story off of things that aren't as extreme, you can weave them together to form a much larger narrative that as a whole that encapsulate as a whole has a far larger stake than a single high stake scenario. Basically, instead of blowing your lo load early, you just sort of build up to it. <laughs> he jabs at the slate and you see the web is being drawn over a map of the ring, lines bouncing from point to point. All these dots, these are Harden's buddies and one, the ones he is messaging right now. And we are going to find them all. That was on purpose? Of course. Harden isn't working alone. He needs the full set or nothing. Fang glances around and slips the slate back into his pocket. We better slip for now, sleeper. But this is exactly what we need. Good hunting. With a pat on your shoulder, Fang drifts away back into the flow of people around the shipyard entrance. You watch him go, unsure whether to be angry or impressed.
Wait, what the fuck? Fang was supposed to remove this fucking tracker from my body, from my skull. In two cycles, I'm gonna get found out by this ass by some asshole that's tracking me, and they're gonna kill me. The shit, Fang. You asshole, you used me. Ah. This is why you can't trust humans. Nothing but a group of backstabbing a a bastards. Um. Asi aside from you, law. Aside from y'all, uh, y'all are great. Uh, yep. Uh, uh, my followers are exceptions to the rule. Mm -hmm. Totally. Please do not take any offense. I'm, I'm of course referring to the uh, the average uh, average meat bag, not the uh, not the exemplary meat bags such as yourselves. <laughs> Betrayal is a lot of work. It, it's easier to just not. That is, I have been informed that that is the case. Oh, so, so it does make me wonder why humans engage, it, engage in it so much. So anyway, I do have quite a bit of time on my hands. Um, also, uh, wait, I can now get... Instant Karma! So once per day, I can re-roll all of my dice. I don't know if that lets you... Um, hmm. I wonder if that lets you re-roll... Does it? It lets you re-roll all, re all of your dice, right? So I wonder if I can use up my dice and then push this button and it will... That sounds broken. I can't imagine that the game actually lets you... Let me check this really quick. the game is not telling me what instant karma is I'm trying not to spoil myself I just want to know how instant karma works all right this is clearly not what I'm looking for And a follow- uh, where is- come on. Really? Come on. This doesn't tell me what I need to know. I need to know, can I roll it after I use the dice up? see here where is the search bar fandom is such hot garbage I swear wow what a great wiki it doesn't even have the uh, instant karma thing okay this is a very useful wiki it tells me absolutely nothing. One of my favorite games has a fandom wiki that's three years out of date. Oh, I feel that. Yep, 
you know what? These rolls aren't that bad, but I'm worried, you know. I'm worried, wondering if I'm going to even survive for the next few. All right, so I can't freaking use this. If I can make some money, I can at least buy one ship mine fragment. So we should definitely do that. The player count dropped by 50% two weeks into the new season, seasons which last three months. The unofficial one is more current, but since the devs fucked the game the past few patches and few Oh I had a game that went that kind of went that way as well. But dropping by half in two weeks into a new season is pretty bad. I'm guessing it's not Halo Infinite though. Not that my game was Halo Infinite. My game was Dirty Bomb, which got done dirty. The main dev is like, this is my vision. <laughs> vision indeed. I need to make money so no one liked the vision so he left. Ah, uh, big mood. That's how it is sometimes, unfortunately. <laughs> I need to make money. Because my intuit's so hot. Oh, this is actually... My intuit is plus one, so I could use... Five, I have a f number five die and get a hundred. This is great. I love it. Ha! Ha ha! Oh, yeah. I'm rolling in dough now. Lows of you stream Disco Elysium, you will watch it. I'll check it out. It seems like the sort of game that I would, lo I would enjoy playing. Can you watch me go in super blind? You can count on it. All I know about... I really have not covered or looked into Disc Elysium outside of the memes. And I don't have any context, so I don't really understand what they're referring to. So I will be able to watch the game. I will be able to play the game uh, fairly blind, all things considered. Oh yeah, I got a ship mine fragment. I only got two though. I'll need a third one. But I won't be able to get another one in a timely manner, so we're going to wait a bit. Alright, so what else we got here? We should definitely play some Tabla. We don't really need any money right now. For the time being. But I think I do need to increase Low Ender here. The game has a 70-ish pound script. Do you mean as in it weighs 70 pounds or it's worth 70 British pounds? Oh, wow. That's fairly good. George R. R. Martin, he eats your heart out. Now then, let's go ahead and push this button and see what... Ooh! <laughs> Okay, so it only rolls, re-rolls the uh, dice you currently have. Okay. The narrator has 350,000 words and knows his first roll. Sounds like he's a great writer. I'm loving it. Let's see how lucky I am, chat. All right. Fairly lucky, it seems. New drives discovered? Get to know Emphis. I need to bring him gear roll caps. Get Sabine out. Wait for Sabine to make contact. Uh, build a ship mind. Build a home. There's a derelict unit in the low end that remains unclaimed. But lots of scrap and a little work, it could be yours. Really? Interesting. 
and a Yatagan tea house. And a tableau room. Uh, tracking heaven age. I wonder what this game will give me if I track Heaven Inch. But here's a derelict unit I can move to if I have enough scrap components. So I need four and um... I don't have any scrap to feed it though unfortunately. I don't know. Where I'm going to... Well, I don't have any dice anymore. But... I'm wondering where I can get scrap from. It looks like I have two more cycles before I get found out. Which is kind of spooking me. I would really appreciate if I could get some of this stuff done. Before that happens. I sure as hell can't get scrap anywhere else. Yeah, I need scrap. What's going to happen if I do this? Ah, I got... The tea houses enforce their signals for a hacker to come out for the upload. Their eyes widen as the data streams to their system. Looks like I got made some money. I'll need to get two more here. Alright. Let's go to bed and hope we don't die tomorrow. Oh, man. Good news, I got two six dies. Bad news, I got one one die. Someone's hunting me, and it is not looking good, chat. If I can somehow scrape together enough for 60 cryo, I'll be able to buy one more ship mine, and I'll be able to use it on the fabricator. I don't know what will happen after that. I might actually be able to do it too because check this shit out. Yeah, I should be able to do it actually. This is a guaranteed 24 right here, which will give me 50. in there. No, I can't use these anyway. Alright. I need some energy too. That's dangerous. I hope this is worth it. We're going all in, chat. We are going to get ourselves that ship mined.
All right. Let's go ahead and purchase the ship. Purchase the last uh, ship mine fragment. And now we're going to go over here to the orc fabricator. What does this X mean? Minecraft? I got an achievement for that. But what does this mean? What is the purpose of this uh, ship mind? The core of a ship AI amputated and in hibernation. Alright, so I got the ship mind. So... Is this for like... For like building a ship or... Nice achievements are fun, they are. Although I'm afraid of getting killed by whoever is tracking me over here in the next, like the next day. Oh my god! Look at these rolls. I re-rolled my one and I got a six. Ah, <laughs> uh, the god of luck loves me. All right then. Let's go ahead and uh, what are we gonna do here? I think it's time we fix this. Uh, in my really low endure score here, right? Make it at least a zero. Cool. Now I don't have any negative scores. Should make things a little bit easier. I really need food, chat. Good thing there's a nice noodle stall here, huh? Awesome. He feeds me some food. Okay. So I have three energy now. I'm actually fairly low right now in dice. I don't know what it is that I'm going to be facing tomorrow, but I am hope I'm able to survive it. I hope I don't die. My god, all ones? Good thing I got this. Oh, shit. Hold it there, sleeper, comes a voice from behind you. Don't you run. It's a bounty hunter, chat. A fickle bounty hunter. Let's stay still for now. Let's see what he wants. Good, good. A hand puts pats your coat down. You know your master's voice. Ethan spins you around. He's wearing a white smirk and a slick jacket, and you immediately know he has terrible news. Get all the way out here. You got all the way out here and then stayed put? He laughs a cruel laugh. That's a sleeper thing? You're my first. You barely hear him. You've noticed the handgun he has leveled at your chest, and it's hard to take your eyes off it. He reaches down with his other hand and slips some kind of ring out from a belt loop without taking his eyes off you. Make it to the eye, though? That's pretty good. This place isn't so bad. Bars, markets, people. I pull most of my contracts out of asteroid caves or off of a godforsaken moons. Hey, Steel. I hope I don't die. It has strong quilt from the man stabbed energy. He splits the ring into two perfect circles. It's hard to hit civilization when there's so much space to pass through. Who are you? Just a freelancer on a contract. He reaches over to slide and slide the rings around your wrist. Go easy. Let's make a break for it, fuck it. You see a chance the moment his eyes leave you to watch the rings. You spin, knocking him away and sprinting down the corridor. Then the shot rings out, echoing off the metal so loud it hurts your ears. A bullet hole smokes in the wall beside your head. You freeze and Ethan closes the gap. This is a very boring routine. Trust me, I've seen it all before. He slips the rings over your trembling wrists. Ethan nudges you to start walking. To the ship and home, he whistles. Going easy. 
You stumble down the corridor, your hands behind you, your mind racing. Well, I know who hired him. And I don't think he can be reasoned with. Or can he? We can work this out. Can we? I don't see much in the way of assets in your possession. Ethan yawns and continues to nudge you down the corridor. Shame to come all the way out here just to head back to SNR right away. That track of yours makes this too quick. I was hoping you'd put up a bit more of a chase, you know? A running bail through the bright market, maybe? Or a holdout in the low end? There's a few establishments I would have enjoyed checking out while I asked around. You walk on in silence for a little longer, desperately trying to think of a way to escape. That SNR track will be the death of you. Hey, I have an idea. Ethan interrupts your thoughts. How about on the way back to the ship we stop for a drink? I'm buying. He laughs at his own joke. I have a better idea. This better not be one of those where you do a dramatic pause and try to jump me, because I'm pretty tired of that. Although, uses Ethan, I've got myself thinking, what's the rush here? Here we are in one of the most lawless joints in the surrogate systems, and we are heading for the exit. He pauses, and you trudge on in silence. Okay, here's the idea, says Ethan. You and me, we make a little agreement. Here are the terms. He turns you to face him. You run or leave or try to bend the eye, I shoot you. You plot or scheme, you try to kill me, I shoot you. But, he smiles. You come meet me in an establishment of my choice every few cycles and you pay my tab, I don't shoot you. He pauses. You don't pay my tab, he rouses his handgun. You get the idea. I get it. Okay, then that sounds to me like a deal. He stretches. You know, I really thought I was going to have to kill you, but this is so much better. He clicks something at his belt and the rings release from your wrists. I'm going to see if I can find my old Sewell the Compressor Club. Come see me there. He aims the handgun at you, squinting down the sight. Let me just remind you, that body of yours is one big tracker, so don't even think about leaving the eye. Oh no. Ethan turns and strides off the cor down the corridor, slipping his hang on the way. The mix of relief and terror you feel is overwhelming. What are you going to do? Man, Fang had better remove this fucking tracker from my body, or I'm going to... Or there's going to be another incident, another, another body floating out the airlock and uh, lickety split. Disable your tracker. Pay Ethan's tab. Maybe if you manage to pay his tab, Ethan will leave you alone. Wishful thinking perhaps, but what else can you do? Wait for Ethan to run up a tab. I wonder if it was even possible to, like, get around to get out of that. Lowell's what made you want to become a VTuber? I've been fucking around with VTuber stuff on Danger U for a while, using... Using, uh, what's my call it? using base rig and I played around the idea with being a VTuber but didn't really commit to it because it took some work and I had a half-assed uh, finished model and things weren't going so well in Danger U and one of my friends from Danger U announced that she was going to become a VTuber so I was like fuck if you're going to be a VTuber maybe I should get off my butt and also join up since I already got a half-finished avatar so I finished up my avatar and I started VTubing in November 5th. And I tried to kind of maintain a presence in Danger U while doing some VTubing since my initial uh, follower base was from Danger U to begin with. And then I had a pretty nasty breakup and I was getting really fucking sick of the people in Danger U. So I uh, started cutting ties over a few course of a few months and the last time I visited was like in April or something. Uh, if anything, I'd like to danger you back when it was smaller. I think it has too many people. It also d really needs some curation. Honestly. But, 
Uh, I'm not here to talk about my old community. Let's go ahead and continue the game. I'm not going to play with three one side dice. So let's go re-roll those and what do you know? I got a six, a four, and a five. R and Jesus loves me. <laughs> so I got a ship mine now. Cheating. It's not cheating. Do you know how long it took me to get this? I earned that. <laughs> All right, then. So we need to get ourselves a derelict unit and move over there to an abandoned housing unit or so. But how are we going to do about go about doing that? Well, first off, we need some food chat. I'm also not going to use my um, stabilizer until I'm down to here. I think I could handle just having two dice, but or just having three dice, but two dice is a little too much. Yep, this all takes place in one big uh, space station, which you have to unlock. Um, you have to basically unlock the unlock the rest of it over time by like exploring these things. Here's the compressor club. In about four cycles, he is going to run up a tab and I need to be able to pay off that tab. So unfortunately, I'll be having to spend, I'll be forced to spend a great deal of time just making money for this fat, for this uh, drunken fuck. Hopefully, hopefully Feng here can remove this goddamn tracker. I have one question for you regarding Disco Elysium. What's the question? I think I've heard that phrase before. Uh, volumetric shit compressor. I can only imagine that either refers to the human's uh, large intestine or it can refer to a septic tank. Perhaps both. Am I right? Damn it! I thought I would have finished the low ender thing by now. Not really. You'll find out once you play it, but I don't want to force you into anything. Play what you want, you know? Okay. Well, I'll keep that in mind either way. Thank you. <laughs> I wonder how much free energy I can get from doing this one. And Tambor Tea House can give me. will pretty much give me. a guaranteed. And I'm sure I'll be needing that. Let's go ahead and finish low end. All right, so low ender is finished. Cool. I don't know what that's going to do for me, but cool. Oh. You cross between two walls units, one of the cavernous caver, cavernous streets at the center of low end. The pressurized bridge is full of the clack of tavla, the shouts of children and the roar of air filters. Sleeper, he turned to see a man sitting at a tablet table alone, somehow untouched by the hustle and bustle of the people around. He gestures to the stool on the opposite side of the table. Sit. He sits at the metal stool and he starts setting out the board with counters, or at least the filter caps low and there's typically used in their place. Caster, he says by way of introduction, looking over his glasses. 
Night or day, he asked, gesturing at the caps. Rudy's played white and black. Night. He nods. The black counters are already on your side. Let's begin. You take a plastic die each, pit it and warm, and roll to determine who starts. Caster rolls a six. You are a four. I lead. He smiles and begins to move his cap precisely along the board. Play passes back and forth between you and the cast. The dice changing hands as the cap spread along the board. As it does, Caster speaks, the eyes not leaving the caps. It is unusual to see a sleeper in the eye. That's why I wanted to play you. You take your turn, rolling a five and a six. Ah, uh, thank you for the head, Pet Asha. Welcome to the stream. Good morning, good morning. How are you? Let's play carefully. After all, a sleeper's mind must be somehow different to a human one. Being emulated, I mean. As Caster talks to you, as Caster talks to you, as Caster talks, you build up a wall of caps, stacking them safely across the board. Progress is slow, but you remain un unexposed. Edmar and Aang, you're doing great. I'm glad to hear it. Welcome to the stream. I don't mean to offend you, Caster says. Your eye, Caster meets your eye. I merely see that you are by definition different. What has been subtracted in the emulation? What has been added? He slides a single cap over onto an open point, a risk and an opportunity. He hands you the dice. Do you, did you ever think about the sleeper? About what you were before and what you are now? Always. I'll give you an ara ara. Ara ah. That was kind of a fucked up one, but I'll do it again. <clears throat> Let me take a sip here of Gamer Juice. You're getting a two for one deal today, Yasha. <coughs> aura, aura. Nah, I, I, nah, I can't do a deep voice either. I have a really strange place where my voice is neither deep nor. I can. I wish I could throw my voice to be sound more feminine, but I can't do a deep voice either. I'm kind of st painfully stuck in where somewhere between, in between. It's probably why I identify as non-binary too. Ara ara. <laughs> All right. If you say so. You roll a double one and solidify your wall. Caster whistles. The holding game. Commendable. It can be brave to build from what came before. You got three, you're blessed. I'm gonna give you a head pad as well. <laughs> he rolls the dice and leaps your wall in a single move. But we cannot idle too long, sleeper. The slower we move, the sooner we are caught. <laughs> you are blessed. The past to you is not just an idea, a concept for you. It is a living, breathing person. He looks up over his glasses, his eyes bright and wide. You split from them like a shadow splitting from his caster. They may be sleeping now, yes. But one day they will awake and will carry you carry on with their lives unaware of your fate, no matter what it may be. He hands you the dice, smiling. You are a branch severed from the main trunk, an offshoot who refuses to die, so to speak. You roll again, under pressure now, trying to slip your caps out from under casters before he solidifies control of the game. So what I am curious about is how you see yourself in all of this, caster asks. What does this tangle of truths make you? Driven. Caster laughs. That much is obvious, sleeper. I see it in your eyes. You are eager to make all this count for something. Caster looks away through the glass to the crowded units on all sides, but driven towards what? He starts removing caps, his home board now full. Is there an end here or just endurance? You try a few more rolls, attempting to get back in the game, but Caster clears his home board with a sense of the, in of the inevitable. He has known he was winning for a while. I feel I may have pushed too far. He slides another cap from the board. I apologize, my curiosity has a habit of getting the better of me. You roll a return you roll to return a cap to the board, but all the spaces are blocked. 
Caster clasps his hands apologetically. You play well. Really, your weakness is not your game. He smiles warmly. We have much to learn from each other. He slides his glasses back up his nose and sits back. I feel we could share knowledge, ideas, perhaps even data. His eyes glint with that last word. To our mutual benefits. He slides his cap. He slides his final cap from the board. It is over. He has won. I see. I'll see. Please, I don't want to make you uncomfortable. He holds up his palms. My intention is only to help you endure here, and if I am able to feed my curiosities. The game over, you notice the bustle of the walkway once more, the call of the children, the deliveries, the arguments, and the reconciliations. They wash over you as you stand and leave, and Coster nodding goodbye as you do. Crossing the walkway, you play the moves of the game in your mind, sh looking for an opening you sure was there. What are the old guard up to these days, I wonder? I have a ship mine for you if you indulge my curiosity. The stories about Yatagan are brutal, but I want the truth. A vile stabilizer should provide the motivation. Cool. If I can get five data pieces of data of Yatagan, he'll give me a stabilizer to help keep me alive a little bit longer. That's very important. I need to make some money if to make ends meet. I have a ship mined. The question is, what do I use this for? Do I need to use it to like... Am I supposed to be building a ship so I can get off this rock or what? This will take a while. And I'm not even sure if- I'm not sure if I have a while. Pretty soon a scrap ship will come up. I can buy scrap for them, or if I could sell scrap to them, it would be good for business. It will take about four cycles before I have to pay Ethan's tab. One million words? Fuck, man. George R. R. Martin? Eat your heart out. I need to get grow early for cost as well. But it'll take a while to get over there. It'll take a while to climb, too. We need to keep ourselves alive for now, in this area. Let's make some money. Forty-three credits. And hopefully we will not die tomorrow, chat. End the cycle for now. You're going to bed? Have a good night, Star Werewolf. Thank you. Thank you for visiting. Oh, shit. Thank you for visiting. I am starving. Let us go uh, fix that. Let's go talk to Sabine. 
Four cycles, Sabine said, and here you are, right on time with no sign of them. You wait a while in the apartment to dread descending as the cycle spins onward. They should be here. Check the terminal. You check and double and double the terminal for messages and recording. Nothing, just a pale glow, the silence. Check the door. You pace back and forth around the apartment, the rumbling of the station suddenly so present and loud. You go to the door and open it to an empty corridor. You close it again. Let's wait. You try to settle down to wait. You sit in the bunk and stare out the tiny room. Where the hell are they? A knock at the door. Open it. Oh, fuck! A figure stands in the door, and immediately you know it's not Sabine. They are taller, sharper, and something in their face glints in the half-light. A dark shape like a stubby baton hangs loosely from their hand. Well, she looks cute. Our local sleeper. Good to finally meet you. She steps into the apartment, glancing around with sharp eyes. What, may I ask, are you doing here? She fixes you with a steady, unwavering stare. Waiting for a friend. Of course. A mutual friend of ours, the good doctor. She walks past you into the apartment, glancing around. We set them up here, you know. This place is one of ours. She picks up a glass from the dispenser and inspects it. People always seem to forget who put them where they are. She glances at you. I suppose you are here to help? Something like that. Good, good. She puts the glass down and turns to face you. I love to meet helpers. We need so many, but we can but can find so few with the right skills. She spins the baton in her fingers by her side, her eyes not leaving yours. We have a problem, you and I. It seems our friend has disappeared, left without even saying goodbye, which means they are in a little trouble now. But it's the kind of trouble that you need help for, so I thought I'd come down here and take a good look at their little hidey hole, and here you are to help. She looks through the de detritus on the side. And what help? A sleeper, no less, which I have to admit is a little surprising. It suggests to me that our friend hasn't been very honest with you either. What do you mean? Well, I'm sorry to say, report that before we got them set up here, Sabine was working for your owners, she pauses. S and R. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Do we trust Yaktagan? Are they telling the truth? Have we been screwed over by Sabine this whole time? Or is the opposite true? You blink hard at the news, unsure how to take it. Rabaya looks away, waiting for a response. Prove it. Happily. She crosses into the next room, and you follow silently. She sets to the terminal and touches her baton to one of the access ports. A spark, then the terminal screen skips, encrypted folders emptying themselves before your eyes. In the flicker of files, you see S and ARP letterheads in code forms, re reports laden with medical data marked with a corporate logo like the sigil of some cult. Rabia steps away from the terminal. Look all you want, some of your files may even be in there. The volume of documents is overwhelming, but they seem to be mostly reports on early emulation tests, surveys with sleeper candidates, reams and reams of usage data. If Sabine was an SNR employee, why did they help you? Rabia reaches over and places a vial of stabilizer on the desk, breaking her concentration. It shimmers in the screen light. It's vicious, viscous, clear liquid crystalline within the glass. We will of course keep up the supply. We are more than able to dispense important medicines, even without the doctor. You hold it between your fingers, and for a tiny moment you have the urge to crush this object for the power it has over you. I'll ask Toshiro to make those a little cheaper for you. He'll be running the surgery now. Rabaya closes up the briefcase lab and holds it at her side. We have to retrieve our assets, of course, but I'm sure you understand. Rabia turns on her way out. There is no reason for us to be enemies, sleeper. Come see me. I keep an office nearby. We have a good work. We have good work to do, you and I. Meet me there in a few cycles. 
She slips out silently into the corridor. You look around the apartment and feel the fear drain out of your body to reveal the tiredness beneath. We're just having our chain pulled by everyone, aren't we, chat? We have a point and endure now. Have the ability to sunbathe. We can now recover energy at home, which shall be very helpful for sure. We really should move to a different place though. These are crappy rolls. Let's roll it again. A one, a three, and a six. I'll take that. Bang, you cocksucker. You better have good news for me when you get back. Honestly. Ah! We can buy some scrap. And we have just the money to do it. Will we succeed? YOLO! Ah, we did succeed. A neutral outcome, but still a decent outcome. Let's get us some scrap, chat. A ship mine fragment from that random scrap? Wow. Wow. Unfortunately, this is not the scrap that I needed. I need four of these to get this new home. At least we got some stabilizer fluid, right? There we go. We got some random scrap here, scrap components. And go ahead and put it into the sterilic unit here. Unfortunately, the scrap yard is only going to let me buy three pieces of scrap. And I have this one, one dice roll here, which I cannot use for jack all at the moment, except for maybe doing a little bit of hacking. Like this one here requires just one. If I give him five of these, it'd be good for keeping us alive a little bit longer with the use of big big widow with the power of stabilizer. Looks like I have three more cycles left before Ethan starts looking for me too. These guys pay the most money.
go ahead and make some cryo really quick. For some reason, doing that has also refilled all of my energy. You finish unloading ahead of schedule, and one of the crew invites you aboard to share warm meals. Thanks for your efforts. Hmm. Wow. That will be helpful. A Yatagan dispensary. Only 80 cryo instead of 100. Should make things a little bit easier. I can make another ship mined if needed. Have a chance. Do I dare do a dice roll here? Have a chance to fail to succeed or fail. I kind of don't want to risk it, to be honest. Bang! You better have be have good shit. Better have something for me when I get back, or I'm gonna be upset. Yeah, I don't think I have much of a choice here. We'll need to. We do need to make monies. Gonna f do a coin flip. Gonna do a coin flip. Ah, uh, I did man. You somehow get lost in the maze of pa mage maze of passages and somehow come back exhausted without delivering all your orders. Minji is furious. Well, at least I made some money. Just enough to buy one more thing of scrap. Scrap allowance is filled out, unfortunately. But we can still give this here. So we're about halfway through that. Not bad. Not bad. Alright. We are exhausted, chat. Let's go to bed. And see what awaits us tomorrow. These are decent rolls. A five, a four, and a two. Uh, what's going on here? It's been more than a few cycles since Feng confronted Hardin, and the silence since has been noticeable. In your time with Feng, you haven't exactly found him to be reliable, but you did expect to hear the end of whatever plan he put into action. But if he won't come to you, you think as you approach to the... But if he won't come to you, you think, as you approach the Havenich building, then it's time to come to him. After all, he did promise to fix your tracker, and you are getting nervous. As you approach the bay doors, you see them wide open, the lights pouring out of the once dark rooms. Stacks of servers and terminals set outside the bay, suddenly robbed of the mystery by the, blight, by the bright flood lamps. A figure in the Havenage security fatigue steps out of the bay as you get closer, getting a stack of hardware. Let's approach. As you get closer, you see the security officer taping up machines from Feng's stash with what looks like hazard tape. This isn't good. You again. Harden is there, leaning beside the bay entrance so calmly that you barely notice him. He has a slate in his hand, an inventory of seizures scrawled across it. Predictable. Further evidence of Feng's collusions. You see another security officer come out of the bay and take notice of you. Arden. Arden pushes away from the wall and comes closer. Don't worry, sleeper. We have all the evidence we need. A confession won't be necessary. He gestures around the stacks of hardware. Spying on fellow Havenage members, hoarding Solheim materials, an obsession with corporate data, it speaks for itself, does it not? That was his job. 
And what would you know about Job Sleeper? He looks up to, at the glass roof above and the stars beyond. We are the ones that provide the oxygen you are breathing, the light you are seeing, the systems you use every day to live out your cycles. This place was hard fought for, Sleeper. It took work, diplomacy, and strength to stop the eye descending into chaos after Solheim collapse, not blind conviction or self-interest. Bang isn't selfish. I know all about the background of our mutual friend, Sleeper. Don't you worry about that. His parents would be sickened by the damage he is trying to do to the institution they helped found. You see, Sleeper, we are proud of our history here. Andrew Ellen is the first union and the first union founded this place, and Havenich has welded his values into the station's very walls. We will never turn away the hardworking, the just, and the true citizens of the Eye. Havenich aren't a gang like Yatagan, we aren't pirates like half the spacers you meet in the hub, or esoterics like those Haifa radicals in the Greenway. We are the backbone of this place, proud and true. We are named Erlen's Eye, Sleeper. This is our station. He meets your eye. So please, take your false accusations elsewhere before I decide that I need a confession after all. History will catch up with you. I'm not afraid of history, Sleeper. We are making it here cycle by cycle. He smiles. If you have any pride, you'll give up Fang the moment he contacts you. Will you know where to find me? With that, Harden turns his back and walks back towards the security officers, ordering them to clear, continue to clear, continue the clear out. As they do, something catches your eye among one of the service stacks, a crumpled, hand-printed box of synthetic chewing gum, a penguin character gwending from the brightly colored card, and scrawled onto it a speech bubble reading, Take me to Tambor. Take it. You carefully pocket the box, making sure no one is watching, and then turn away just as another stack of servers is wheeled out of the bay. What have you done, Feng? And where the hell is Tambor? Thankfully, I do know where Tambor is. Because we are just there. The Tambor Tea House. Let's give him the gum box. You feel stupid doing this, but the penguin says take me to Tambor, and this is the only Tambor you can find. As you leave the Tambor Tea House, a hand falls on your shoulder. Oh hey, it's Feng. Sleeper. Feng hisses from behind you. How did you find me? The penguin. Penguin, what are you? He thinks for a second, oh, do you mean... That wasn't meant for you specifically, but he cringes. Look, it doesn't matter. Come. Let's sit. Bang guides you down a set of stairs to one of the timbers' lower levels. The tea house is stacked with curved mezzanines, all connected by a central atrium. The levels are filled with makeshift booths and bars. Conversation bounces busily off the metal walls. Bang sees you looking around. This place used to be a fuel tanker's main drum, hence the name. The tea house part is a bit of a misnomer though. You can get anything the eye offers from this place, but real tea isn't exactly readily available. He picks a booth. It's self-fashioned from some old salvage tank or container, lined with spongy insulation foam, and collapses into it. He looks around furtively. Don't suppose you've seen any Havenich types? They don't usually come out this far. Only you. Ah, not anymore, I'm afraid. Suspended without appeal. Turns out Harden has someone's ear. He grins. Doesn't bother me, though. It shows we hit a nerve back there. He picks a scrappy, hand-scrawled menu from the table and tosses it over. What are you drinking? What's the plan? Plan, plan, plan. He waves his hand. Let's order first. Feng is right, the menu is ridiculous. There's at least 10 different infusions, most of which you can't make out, but the paper is dominated by an extensive complement of esoteric alcohols and, alc and cocktails. Black tea is listed without a price as a seasonal specialty. So you ran into Harden. Was he pissed? Feng doesn't wait for an answer. 
That snake is so self-righteous he might actually believe that Erlen would approve of his mirror to craft it bullshit. He taps on the table. If Havenage was like it should be, like it was found it to be, they would have shouted him down at any council meeting he dared to mention true to citizens. He sighs, but I guess that his kind run the place now. A young woman with a vine tattoo snaking up her arm turns up to the booth a slate in hand. Your order? You skim the menu, your eyes glazing over. Time to pick something. A girl, neat. Bang taps the order table to order the same, and you, she begins, looking to Fang, but when she sees him, she suddenly stops. What the? Fang shrinks a little. You're supposed to be working. This is your shift. He grins sheepishly. You work here? Fang waves you to be quiet. Look, Jenna. Let's just say this is my break. My friend here has been through a lot. Jenna looks between the two of you. Wave. Fang doesn't look pleased. Two minutes, says Jenna, pointing at Fang. And only because I don't want to get dragged into whatever this is, she gestures at the table and walks off. What? Fang stretches out in the booth. You know how it is. We all have to eat. What's up, plus? He leans in. This is the best place around here to find a person you might be looking for. Who? Remember that web of connections that Harden pinged the moment we confronted him? Those are his collaborators. And if we want to understand what a Solheim executive might be getting up to in the eye, those are the people we have to find. Fang is almost whispering now. Here's a couple of them I suspect are in low end, and well, almost everyone in the low end comes through this place at one time or another. It brings a modified slate out onto the table. Set this up so that when anyone with the network signature I'm looking for comes into close proximity, it'll mark them. Once they are marked, we can break through their access protocols and get at the good stuff inside. We just have to find them first, hence me moonlighting as a waiter. Suddenly a smile grows across his face. Wait, I have an idea. What? Look, I can't cover enough of the low end on my own, and so far I've had no matches in this place. With two of us, we can cover more ground. How? Well... Bang has a hangdog look. We need to get you out... Out and about in the low end, in close proximity to as many people and residences as possible. And, it turns out, my friend Mindy Minji needs some help with deliveries. As in Minji Express? So you already know him. Perfect. Bang places a tiny receiver on the table. This connects to my slate and runs the same marking protocol if you ever get near any of our targets. So all you have to do is take some delivery ships for old Minji and soon enough you'll have the place covered. Bang. Don't give me that. You think I like working here? And I thought you could use the tips. He grins. We are in this together, right? Right. Okay, then. Fang slips his slate back under his clothes. Just head up on to Minji Express, take a delivery ship, and we'll see what shakes you, which shakes up. If you manage to find anyone and extract any data, bring it right down here to me. They have me on double shifts, so I shouldn't be hard to find. Jenna walks past, carrying a tray of drinks, and sharply catches Fang's eye. I don't think she's bringing your drink, he stands. I think it's time we call this meeting to a close. Grab the receiver from the table and slip into a pocket. See you soon, sleeper. Stay safe, Fang adds, before turning and walking off towards the bar, whistling as he does. Ray, this just got a lot harder. Uh, I need to pay his tab too, fuck. I can't buy any more scrap. We need the money, chat. We really need money. This is not funny. <laughs> I 
I guess we're gonna be doing this for a little bit. Not bad. Uh, please don't roll badly. Oh, shit. I was afraid that would happen. Let's do a reroll. Oh, it got worse. Well, that was always a risky move. 50 50 dice roll. Ah, uh, we did horribly again. Not doing so well. Only 19 cryo and nothing to show for it. We are going to starve, or we are starving, I should say. Thankfully, we can order some fungus, but that eats up a lot of our credits. So I'm back down to four. I wonder if we're going to be okay tomorrow, chat. I'm not sure if we can wait for two dice roll. Thankfully, we have like two destabilizers. So, you know, it's not that bad. We should be able to last a little bit longer. And there we go. Body has been repaired. Let's end the cycle for now. These are decent dice, all things considered. Hey Joe, thank you so much for the lurk. Welcome to the stream. We're playing Citizen Sleeper, which is a TT, a single player TTRPG. It takes place in a post-capitalist uh, society that's falling apart once again, up in space. I love this, I live for this shit. Right now, we're probably going to get screwed over because this guy wants his money and I don't know how much he's going to ask for. Hey, Pastel. Welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My favorite people are here today. <laughs> Let's see now. They're not going to let me buy any more of this, but thankfully, I can make some quick cash very quickly. And they fed me. That's always good, right? Hey, Steel. You're still here? Good to know. Aha! I'm fully, uh... I'm fully... Charged up. This little robot is fully charged up. I only have 34... It looks like I only have 34 uh, cryo, though. I'll need to play some games of chance. Make up the rest of the deficit. Let's roll! I hope I don't fail it. Ah, yes. Perfect outcome. Plus 24. I got 58 credits. Let's re-roll my dice. I got a nice 5 over here. Cool. Another positive outcome, I have 82 credits, just like that. But I have one, a, a single dice roll here, which is a 50-50 chance. Looks like Rabaya wants me to talk to her as well. As you approach the address, Rabaya will give you a heavy hand falls on your shoulder. What's your business here? Oh. Ah! I've been slimed. Of course you would slime me before you get to work. Go to work. Getting yourself off to prepare for a day ahead. I hope you have a good day at work. The enforcer grips your shoulder, giving a hint of the strength of in her implants giver. As you turn to see the same subsidiary eye- Ah! No! Subsidiary eyes as Rabai and Toshiro, glinting like mirrors on her cheeks. Gia, yeah, please. The sleeper is here by my invitation. At Rabia's command, the hand immediately loosens and an apologetic look replaces the scowl on Gia's face. Of course, Rabia, I'm so sorry. 
You better not control yourself. <laughs> Rabaya waves her away. Don't you worry, I appreciate your protective instincts. She smiles at the enforcer. How about you head to the tambour? They need to have a delivery coming in. They'll need some help with the lifting. Gia nods and walks away. So sleeper, you came. I'm glad. I was curious. <laughs> curious is good. She smiles a tight smile. You have to understand, finding you there in Sabine's unit, I wasn't sure where we stood. There were more than a few people on the station who would rather I was dead. I had to be sure you weren't one of them. I wish you no harm. I am glad. Rabaya begins walking and gestures for you to walk with her. She takes you down the staircase into the bustling walkways at the low end. What do you know about Yadagun? You run the low end. She laughs. That sounds impressive. We run out of the low end, yes, but we don't run it. People with carts push past, moving crates of supplies around the thin and winding passages. Our reputation is one that implies threats, but is that fair to say? We are framed as aggressors, parasites, criminals. She gestures around at the people in the passageway. But when was the last time you saw a lawmaker in the eye? A policeman? Who makes the laws here? Avenage. Yes, they like to believe so, don't they? By claiming a lineage that extends back into the Erland's Union, they assume the burden of authority. But they have no authority here, out past the Bright Market, where a few work in their shipyard or pay for their docking berths. If you had spent your time in the Low End, maybe your opinion of us would be different. This is our place, our people. The Low End was empty in Erland's time. It didn't need to house the thousands, and keep the yards and rotunda safe was work enough. And keeping the yards and rotunda safe was work enough. No, the low end was reclaimed later when the refugees started arriving. Rabaya meets your eye. The collapse didn't just happen here on this station. When Solheim collapsed, the entire system felt it. Ow! Yeah, uh... E A T N I G J redeem throw something. Thank you for the redeem. How are you doing today? <laughs> Welcome to the stream. The collapse didn't just happen here on this station. When Solheim collapsed, the entire system felt it. It's trash can trash. <laughs> Welcome back. I was wondering how you got a subscription. The moons of Ember and Cinder suddenly gained independence overnight. Some took advantage, some tried to hold it together, some fled. The Eye became a refuge, and Erlen, to his credit, extended an open hand to Avon. But many within his organization disagreed, and those new arrivals weren't as simple to corral as they hoped. Rubaya leads you to, through a small market hall, busy with small stalls and traders. You needed to change your name to your social? I understand. Erland's union was made of workers, administrators, people who were malleable and already organized into hierarchies and networks. The refugees came from different factions. Let's party! And families were scared, injured, and desperate. Conflict was inevitable. Thank you for the hydrate, Redeem. Yatagan is a child of that conflict. A child born out of the need for us to stand up and claim our future. To provide security, strength. People call us a gang, but we are a community. I take my position as lieutenant seriously, and from my birth I have worked to earn it. We're playing Citizen Sleeper tonight, which is a tabletop role-playing game except single player. Taking place in a post-apocalyptic, post-capitalist, uh, cyberpunk space future on a dying space station. Wabaya catches herself before she raises her voice any further, you b and you both walk in silence for a while among the smells and textures of the low end. You start to wonder if this place could be home for you too. It is fun. Where do I come into this? It's fairly cheap too. On Steam. Rabaya smiles to herself and thinks for a moment before she responds. I believe that you understand the importance of a refugee 
of a refuge. So I also believe that you wish to help keep this place safe. She exhales quietly. For this reason, I would like you to trust me. I do not know what Sabine told you about us, but I imagine it was not good. I will be honest with you, sleeper. I was never comfortable with having Sabine as part of Yatagan. An ex-corporate employee? It goes against our nature. But their deal was with Yannick. I kept my distance, made sure Sabine had their surgery, kept it supplied, and that was all. But I cannot allow people to go back on the promises they have made to us. Yatagan has not lasted this long because it is a charity. We offer and ask for support. Any betrayal will be treated as an attack. Who is Yannick? Yannick is one of the heads of Yatagan. They guide us. He is the newest to be elected. He is an elder. Sabine found something. Please, I don't want to hear their accusations. They only wanted to escape their debt. They would have said anything. But where are they now to stand behind their claims? Stay silent. You realize that your Rabia has led you in a loop, and together you both come back up a staircase to the walkaway where you met. You are free to go, sleeper. I have said what I wish to say. She looks out through the windows of the walkway. I will protect this place with my life as it has protected me. I want to make that clear. She turns back. However, if you would too wish to come under its protection, I can help you. Return here if you wish, and there will be a task for you to complete. You will be able to see Yatagan, to see the low end with your own eyes, not as others frame us. As for Sabine, she pauses to consider her words. I will not ask you to betray them, but if they contact you again, consider their motivations carefully. With that, Rabia leaves, slipping back into her office while you stare out at the countless units, each a home, each with a story that makes up the low end. Could it help you settle on the eye? Hmm. That's a good question. That's a good question indeed. That's dangerous. I definitely need scrap though for my derelict unit. I hope I have enough to pay his tab. Or I'm gonna be fucked. And I hope this doesn't hurt that much. To dice is a uh, coin toss though. And I passed the coin toss. Thank God. Alright. Let's hope that we are still alive tomorrow, chat. God, I hope so. These are decent dice. Three energy, though. That's not that much. Oh, it's only 58. How can someone drink this much in six cycles? Ethan hasn't held back while he's been the compressor. 58 though? That's not that bad. Alright. I can't believe you just did that. Ethan's mocking laugh comes from along the bar. You look over to see him leaning across in, it, in a pool of light, emptying glasses, spilled drinks glinting around him. It's always dark in the compressor, but this cycle the place is packed. A load of spacers mixing with the locals. Usually they run. 
Ethan spins a glass in the bar. Or they go spend their savings on some local heavy I have to put down. They don't pay. I'm done. Wrong. Not even close. Ethan gets to his feet. The glass falls and smashes, but he doesn't seem to notice. You think that's it? One round of drinks and we are even? Sleeper, come on. Wrong. Not even close. You think that's it? One round of drinks and we are even? Sleeper. Come on. His hand comes to rest in the butt of his handgun, dangling from a chest holster. What's wrong with you? Ethan laughs hard, and the people around him turn to see what's happening. You think this is on me? I think someone in your position might have a better idea of how this all works. I'm a freelancer sleeper, just like you. We both signed up a co signed a contract with SNARP, didn't we? The difference is that my word means something. He closes the gap, stumbling a little. What did you think? You could just run away from your contract, your debt? You could just steal that natty little body of yours and take it for a joyride? Play human for a cycle or two? You don't understand. It's you, sleeper, that doesn't understand. Some of us pay our debts, but it's all the harder because of idiots like you. Though I should thank you. Ethan nods, his head heavy. For giving me such an easy job. I'm used to outlaws, you know? Real bounties. If I was knew, if I knew catching sad little escapees like you was so easy, I would have changed clients ages ago. Someone shouts from the back of the bar for Ethan to shut up. Builds a finger in that general direction without turning around. Shoot me or let me leave. Oh, I see. Toughening up here. He gestures wildly at the crowd. Thumbs up or thumbs down, folks. Most turn back to their drinks, no longer interested in this tired show. Ethan mutters insults as he walks back towards the bar. Ethan sits heavily back down on his stool and searches through his glasses for one with something left in it. The thing is, sleeper, I can find you anywhere. It's actually wild that you haven't figured it out. That body isn't yours, and it will always betray you, no matter what. He finds the glass and downs the contents. So please, go. I'll catch up with you whenever I need another. He laughs and taps the bar for a fresh drink. Look at yourself. Give it up, sleeper. I'm done teaching you for today. He settles his hand, head on the bar and closes his eyes. Sick of you. Go find a job. You turn on your heel and are out, out of the cloying dark and the sweet so sweat stench of the compressor. You walk hard and fast down the walkway, anger driving your footfalls into the metal of the rim like hammers. Ah. We actually did manage to finish uh, paying his tab. I wonder if he's just going to, like, get sick from drinking so much I got two upgrade po I only got one upgrade point shit well I want to get hard to kill in case things go really bad for me got plus one to endure now I used to be our weakest stat Gonna take a while before him to run up another bill, and we now know how much I need to carry, um, how much I need to break, get. So it's not all bad. I need Fang to fucking remove my tracker. Ah! Thank you for the Hydra Redeem and the posture check. Uh, and the Let's Party, Vim Boy. Much appreciated. Chat, I will thank you for the head pad as well. I'll need to take a break to finish my Duolingo classes for tonight just to let y'all know. Be in a few minutes. Ew, I've been slimed. I've been slimed. Figures. Getting slimed by two people at once in one evening. 
I know what y'all really want from me. <laughs> All right. The Minji Express. Let's do, let's uh, do some noodle manufacturing first, actually. This is an automatic success right here. That refills all our energy, as expected. We can't buy any more scrap from here, however, we can... We can't get any scrap from here either, actually. We need to find scrap somewhere, though. Question is where? I know I saw it earlier, too. Uh, Rabia's office, actually. We need to collect tights. And if we get a really good score on this, they're going to give us some scrap components. So we're definitely doing that. One mechanic tied to a new filtration system for the block's A treatment. And after you help install it, he offers you some of the remaining scrap. Thank you, good sir. Let's go ahead and move our derelict unit to here. Well, actually, we need more scrap for that. Again, getting slime is something different in Australia. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Let's go ahead and see if we can get lucky here. Get another scrap component. Ah, and what do you know? It I succeeded. Thank you. So we are going to go ahead and get our new place. You tuck the scrap into the shadow interior. It's hard to imagine this place as a home, but it can't be worse than a container. We have a new home. But all the materials, the unit now needs sealing section by section to be usable. It's a laborious task, but the outcome is worth it. Hmm. So, I need to... Basically keep... Doing this. Hmm. I guess it does pass the time. Oh my god, even with rerolls. Well, I shouldn't be too upset, honestly. On the bright side, there's not much that can go wrong except losing energy. Oh, it's still 50 50 though. Ah, fuck. Alright. So, it looks like our housing project is still going to take a while, chat. Unfortunately. That could always be worse, I guess. Let's end the cycle for now. One more day of uh, five dice rolls. I wonder what will happen if I make a new home over here anyway. I'm hoping something good. This might take a while, after all. And here we go. It's gonna be... Ah, there we go. We pulled it off. Track down a difficult leak and close it up. After working, look for the wreck of the unit. Almost there. Almost there? You mean it's not done yet? Oh, squatter's rights. I got a new achievement.
and there is a small animal that apparently is living here. Let's go visit. Let's go say hi to them. You can buy the crackers from a shop unit downstairs and crumble it up in the trays. Something moves in the shadows. Aww. The stray. Ah! The stray hops up onto a work surface and looks at this unit's small window. It doesn't acknowledge your presence, it just sits there beside the tray of crumbled crackers staring out at the low end. What is this cat's story? Are there more in the station? You haven't seen another in the low end, but in this vast megastructure that means little. There could be a whole colony of cats like this one down in the warrens. You look at its sleek, dark fur and sharp eyes. It doesn't look ragged, it looks at home. In fact, its presence in the unit makes you wonder if this is the stray's apartment which you're squatting in. Watch the stray. Though the stray is looking out at the station, you feel its attention on you, waiting for you to spring your trap. You remain relaxed and watch as something flickers in its eyes, perhaps the reflection of a passing ship. The stray settles a little and starts eating, picking at the broken crackers. You don't remember ever having been this close to an animal. It triggers something in you, a recognition of a life totally unlike your own, but still somehow connected, parallel, and, and, and even interwoven. The stray looks clumsy for its fur. Do you like it here? The stray flicks her tail at the sound of your voice. It is hard to imagine the stray liking anything, or at least being vulnerable enough to admit it, but the stray's pleasure at existing here and this place shines through its every sinew. It is not the, that the stray is always happy in the eye, but that the stray is engaged by this place. It is alive here. You turn your eyes to the window, the one that the stray looks out of, and you both watch the stars and the ships together. You feel something pass between you and the stray, a kind of acknowledgement of each other, a sense that each of you might share something with the other, a point of connection. Then all at once the stray yawns wide, hops down from the unit and brushes along your legs. And then it is gone, out through the unit door and back into the corridors of the low end. Sweet. I wonder what will happen if you keep buying these tray crackers. Build a home. I end up getting an upgrade point for that as well. I need two upgrade points here, unfortunately. I need to save my points. Go ahead and locate the low-end agent instead. And make some money while we're at it. Ta-da! Money has been made. Oh right, I don't live down here anymore. I'm dumb. I'm still curious what I need the ship mine for. Can I like build a ship to escape or something or what?
I gotta save some money for myself, but I'll use a little bit more here. The stray crunches up the crackers as you watch. Sometimes they'll let you stroke them, sometimes not. <laughs> Let's see what happens tomorrow. Starving! That's not good. Let's do something about that, huh, chat? Sunbathe a little bit. Voila! Regained a bunch of my energy. We have one six to use. And we could use it to perfect this. Awesome. Doesn't look like it used up a Fang's target or rose this though, so let's go ahead and re-roll our dice. That's fairly good right there. Awesome. So that's completed. Sleeper! You see Fang coming up on the corridor as you step out of Minji's. The kelp noodle smell still clinging to your clothes. Comes up fast and stops close, looking around suspiciously. I don't have long. Take these. Fang palms you a couple of those metal thumbnail-sized tribes ripper worms. My slate has been buzzing like crazy. It seems your delivery ships have turned up our two targets. He squeezes your shoulder. I knew you could do it. Now we nail those snakes. What do we do? Arden's boys are all connected by some kind of closed network. You break the access protocols on both of them, you should be able to gain the location and nearest network ports. Slot the Ripper Worms into those ports, one each, and they'll feed me anything and everything stored on Harden's Shadow Network. He smiles. Can't wait to see what juicy plans they have in there. You hear the scuff of boots as the group comes up the corridor, likely on their way to a place in Ordo and Mingi. You turn for a second, and when you look back, Fang is already halfway down the corridor in the opposite direction. He raises a hand to Pharrell and is gone. You run your fingers over the tiny Ripper Worm drives in your pocket and smile to yourself as you wonder how mad Jenna will be at Fang for this little excursion. Time to slot some worms. That sounds lewd. I'll slot your worm. Damn. That's gonna be difficult. I don't have those. Yeah, fuck that. I won't be able to do. I won't be able to slot Harden's uh, goons tonight. It seems. Perhaps some other time. Looks like I need to make some money. Oh, the game's not gonna like me. Not gonna let me make any more money. Shit. 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 Where am I going to make money now, chat? This is... I did not expect this to happen, actually. Oops. Well, we got 63 credits, so maybe... It won't be a big deal? Even with plus one, this is still has a 50% chance of failing. Scary. We can afford to lose some energy, though. Ah.
Well, we should have expected that to happen, I guess. Let us end the cycle for now. And let me go ahead and finish my Dwarven Lingo classes really quick, chat. These are very mediocre rolls, but we should have a better day today, I bet. Give me a second, please. I'll show you be really quick. Alright then. Let's feed this trade today as well. Still not sure what that's going to be doing for us, but hopefully something good. I don't really need any components, but I do appreciate some energy. Hopefully four will be enough. It is. Good. I made a little bit of energy there. We don't have much in the way of... Actually, no, wait. We need to... Hack Harden's network. Almost forgot. And hopefully we'll be able to do just that. Here's a Harden agent. I was not supposed to do that. Well, nothing to do about it now. I just need to pay a little bit more attention, I guess. What I need to be doing is finding the place where... is to find the place to install these uh, ripper jacks. These uh, ripper worms. The question is, where? Where do I install them? So we need to hack Harden's agents. Okay. So we are supposed to be doing that then. You remember the guy who lived here? He didn't tip. Time for him to see the consequences. <laughs> I 
Pardon Agent Port. Cool. Put this here. The port's been closed. Haven't made a nest. And this hardened agent as well is unlocked. We're going to extract his data. And the rip and jack. Awesome. Go talk to Fang, the systems engineer. As you walk into the tambour, you quickly spot Fang arguing with Jenna. Approach. You come up behind Fang and he turns and notices you. Jenna stops mid to aid as you arrive. She turns to you, you again. You here to vouch for this layabout? I am. She laughs. Well, 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 what are you two up to? Fang wings at you and interjects. It's like I told you, Jenna. I'm helping them out, getting them settled, sorting their life out. They are a sleeper, you know what that means? Jenna softens. She looks a little embarrassed. Of course I know. She stops to think. Look, Fang, I get it. You are trying to help, but if you want to keep this job, you're going to need to be a bit more liable. Fang nods solemnly. Won't happen again, Jenna, I swear, I promise. She looks suspiciously between the two of you. Okay, then. He turns to you, and look, I didn't mean to... Just be cool, alright? He turns and walks back to the bar. Well, well, didn't know you'd stand up for me, sleeper. Fang claps you in the back. I appreciate the solidarity. He takes out his slate, pulsing with pale light. Now let's take a look at what you are really here for. The slate is a whirring mess of code streams coming direct from the ripple worms as they dig through the agent's data and spin into threads for the slate to pick up. Anything good? Fang scrolls the display with a finger. A lot of junk, but a lot of dull as hell message threads. A lot of tedious data caches, but... Fang's eyes flash. Definitely some good stuff. He stops the screen scrolling on an entry and expands it. Check this out. Fang shows you the screen. You see a bold corporate logo, not Solheim's, and a word below. Conway, Fang says. He's working with Conway. Conway Extractions. Ah! Thank you for the redeems. Thank you for the head pad. How are you doing tonight, then, boy? I'm glad that you're great. I'm also great. This game is great. Bang nods. He's been speaking with them personally. Got a whole chain of messages here, but it's mostly encrypted or redacted. He rubs his head. Damn it, this is juicy, but we can't name with it. He scrolls some more. Wait, 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 what's this? A wasteland reclamation facility? Right here in the eye. He glances at you. What's the the best what's the bet this place is tucked into the waste? The waste? It's a section of the eye Erlen couldn't reclaim. It was too damaged, too cut off. Back before the collapse, people would have got there by going down the connected spoke from the hub. But that spoke's broken now, so the only way is the long way, around the rim, past the greenway. He shows you on his slate. Fang looks away, thinking. Conway have been making moves on the system since the collapse. I heard they took over one of Solheim's old belt colonies a while ago, moved everyone out, and reclaimed the whole rock. What's their angle? Harden has to be offering them something. Fang looks back at the screen. But if Harden is involved in it, then we need to check it out. Simple as that. What's next? Fang stares out into the middle distance. We have to get to that facility. The answer to whatever Harden has been preparing, prepping, been planning, has to be there. And we are going to catch him in the act. Give me five, maybe six cycles, and then I'll see you on the greenway. I seem to remember there's some old service docks on the outer shell, up by the Haifa building. Should be a good place to meet. I guess that's where we're going next, chap. Fang squeezes your shoulder. Thanks again, Sleeper, for sticking with this. I haven't forgotten about the tracker of yours, either. But I'm going to need to be back in my bay to pull a solution together. 
He turns the slate around to face you, showing a mass of scrolling code. I've been working on a fix in my breaks, he winks. Ben grins widely. Now I've got to go ask for some time off from Jenna. Wish me luck. He waves as he walks back to the bar where Jenna is standing, a look of deep exhaustion in her eyes. Ooh, another upgrade point and a new drive. Bang has located a Conway facility buried deep in the waste. He needs your help to crack it open and expose Harden. So we need to get to the Greenway, which is going to take a while because it's across this gap. And that's really expensive. 150. Upgrades available. We got two upgrades now. What do we use it on is the question. I want to be hard to kill. Now we're hard to kill, chat. Should be good. Can you get some gear old caps for Emphis? Walk for Rabia for a while and hopefully make some money and not pay off my pay off uh what's his face ah i re-rolled it and it's still a two what bullshit Need to make money, chat. I have these things, but I have not been able to use them yet. A 50% chance at neutral and 25% chance to get plus 24 cryo. I hope my luck's not bad. Oh, and I got good luck. Good. 88 credits. We'll have to take it. Let's see what tomorrow holds for us, chat. Hopefully I'll still be alive. We are running out of energy. like my odds of what's gonna happen here chat let's go see what's happening the compressor is quiet today the usual crowds are elsewhere and the pumping music washes over a handful of spacers and a few drunks Ethan is still in the same stool in the same pool of light his head is low close to the bar and the bartender is ignoring him approach him as you get closer he lifts his head and turns sleeper he sleeper he turns to you look at you Time to pay up again, is it? He gushes to the bartender. Come here, take their chits. No more, Ethan. Ethan doesn't look at even look at you. He props his, head, his elbows on the bar and he holds his head. Sleeper, it's been a long cycle. Enough. Ethan lets out a long sigh. He rapidly rubs his eyes with his palms. You're right, he says quietly. This isn't fun anymore. He reaches towards his holster. His elbow slips and the gun tumbles out. It clatters on the bar and falls to the floor, bouncing onto the ground between you. Both you and the bartender look at the gun. Stare at it. Butterfinger, says Ethan, and puts out a... Butterfinger, says Ethan, and puts out a hand beckoning for you to give him the gun back. If you would... The bartender looks at you warily. You crouch down and pick up the gun. Chibi Sensei, welcome to the stream. Thank you for your first view. How are you doing tonight? I think I raided you not too long ago, didn't I? 
that we know each other. <laughs> Thanks for the hype emojis. Now, this choice can make or break the game, I'm sure. But right now, Ethan is pretty... pretty fucking pathetic. Been lurking since I started? You guys were in chat last time? Indeed we were. <laughs> Indeed we were. Pretty sure this part's game breaking. Do I point the gun at Ethan? Or do I hand Ethan the gun? I mean... I think if I handed Ethan the gun... It's not going... He's not going to be able to use it on me anyway because he's so fucking drunk that he dropped his own firearm. He's probably... Since he's a cynical bounty hunter, I can only presume that he... That he's expecting me to point the gun at him. I wonder what will happen if I do the unexpected and hand Ethan the gun. You slap the handle of the gun back in Ethan's hand. Thank you, he hisses. Now, where was I? He lazily swings the gun past you and the bartender. Yes, leaving. He stands. Sleeper. While this has been fun, I think I've wrung every last trap out of his play. Sleeper. While this has been fun, I think I've wrung every last drop out of this place. Time to go home. He waggles the gun towards the door. Let's go see s and R. I'm staying. Ethan brings his gun hand to his face and rubs his eye. Well, he says the bounty pays half, but he levels the gun. He level up to you and he pulls the trigger. The gun clicks. By now, all the attention in the bar is on you and Ethan, who looks at his gun with a bemused expression. The bartender raises an open hand, and in it are ten shiny bullets. Ten shiny bullets he took out of Ethan's gun while he was asleep on the bar. I have the biggest smile on my face right now. That's so cool. That's so fucking cool. That the, the payoff was so worth it. I'm so glad I did not spoil myself for this game. That I didn't look anything up. Ethan smiles at him. Oh well, he says, and he hits you in the head with the butt of the gun. You stagger back and drop to a knee. Somewhere nearby, the gun clatters onto a surface. It hits a glancing blow, but it makes your vision swim. Through the blur, you see Ethan wrestle a small, thin slate from his belt and hold it up. Enough of this. I'm logging the job and calling it in. Ethan taps at the slate. No more playing. Your head aches. Ethan taps through a few screens impatiently. He swears and taps again. He starts shouting. A dull echo to your ringing ears. He starts screaming at the slate and throws it across the bar. What the fuck happened? He crouches down and grabs you by the chin. His face closed, his breath heavy with drink. S and R just screwed me, he grins maniacally. They canceled the contract. <laughs> Feel so bad for this guy. He's got. <laughs> he got all this shit happened to him for nothing. <laughs> oh my god. Ah, fuck you, stupid fucking meat bag. That's that's so that's so good. If 
any of y'all have any interest in narrative games in cyberpunk fiction, then I, 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 I strongly suggest this game. For sure. He stands up. They canceled the contract! He shouts at the scene. They got the contract. <laughs> You stand up, struggling to your feet, the sting of the hit fading. Ethan is rubbing his temples, his face pale. You hear a clicking sound, like coins being counted, like bullets being loaded into a magazine. When you shake off the last of the blur, the bartender has Ethan's pistol trained on Ethan's head. Ethan stumbles back towards the middle of the room, all eyes trained on him. I'll kill all of you! He screams. He stumbles into the wall, spinning away towards the door. I'll be back for that, she shouts at the bartender and lunges out the compressor. You steady yourself on the bar and catch your breath. The rumble of the conversation returns. The bartender goes to say something but then thinks better of it and begins to clean the bar. After a while you wander out into the light of the bright market looking for Ethan around every corner. Ethan's vendetta. Ethan may be disarmed, but you doubt you've seen the last of him. So in the end, playing it cool this whole time. Uh, and have working for us, chat. We need to get some gear roll caps from the green, greenway. We have around 18 minutes left on uh, today's stream. Maybe we can get to the greenway by the time it's time to end the stream, huh? Well. It's time to feed the cat, since I won't need to give any money to Ethan. if I got to know people around the shipyard, actually. Especially since I can now do this, like, decently. We'll take some time off to do some stuff here, and then we'll work on Yatagan later, I suppose. Ooh, they gave me some food. Gonna re-roll these. And get hopefully we will get a positive result. We did. I'm starting to starve. Well I'm halfway done with that already. We got some extra money so we can go ahead and afford to eat an emphasis stall. We're going to eat well tonight. Ta da! 69 credits. Nice. It's probably not a good idea, however, to try and pull this off with 50-50 chance. We can wait. Instead. Uh... 
Let's see if we can recharge with some sunbathing, and it was it worked good. Let's go ahead and end the cycle for now. Mm -hmm. Some decent rolls today, very decent actually. I can probably get into the shipyard very easily now. With some guaranteed 100% rule, guaranteed successes. Very nice. Awesome. Ooh, okay. So we can actually make money here. Good. We needed a source of money for a while. And we have another story here from Lemon Mina. We'll go ahead and read their story and we will go ahead and call it a night. This seems like a good stopping point. Ooh, have an inch. We can give them some Yatagan information for some money, or we can give them some ship mine fragments. Let's go see about Lemon Mina first. From the walkway, the side rail horizon looks impossibly vast. A landscape of plating and frames. All along her flanks, torches flicker. Drones maneuver, arc lights glint. The sense of scale of industry is both stunning and strangely unsettling. She's quite beautiful, I think. You turn to see a figure a little way down the walkway, leaning at the railing. He has thin, ragged, Ragged, his work gear poorly fitting and loose. The torches of the side reel horizon flicker in his eyes as he turns to you. Lem, he leans back from the rail, revealing a child standing beside him, staring at the ship. And this is Mina, he adds with a smile. Hi, Mina. She stares and tucks herself beside Lem, who dutifully picks her up. She's a little slow to trust, aren't you, Mina? She buries her face in the folds of his overalls. Mina looks out from Lem's chest, a dark brown eye twinkling among the rough material. You working on her then? Lem asks eagerly, gesturing to the vast ship or just admiring. He shifts Mina's weight to his other arm. Admiring. Understandable, he nods, gazing back out of the sidereal horizon. You like her too, don't you, Mina? He adjusts her a little. She's Mina's and my ticket out of this place, our escape vector, so to speak. The ship? You haven't heard? Anyone who takes a Havenish contract on the side rail horizon will be entered into a draw for the transit support crew. He smiles. We won't get to sleep the journey through, through, but a couple of decades of service will be nothing for me and Mina if it means landfall in a new world, she says. Decades? It's a long trip. He straightens up, stretching his back. That's a colony ship, friend. The Celis Foundation is sending thousands of people to settle a system well outside the reach of the core worlds. It'll be a totally independent colony. No surrogacy, no corporations. Sales Foundation? They are Havenage's a client, yes. Some wealthy project from the core systems, interested in independence and self-sufficiency and all that. They hired the whole shipyard out, helped to wreck it, rekit it, and everything. He strokes Mina's hair. It's someone else's dream, I suppose, but it doesn't mean people like me and Mina can't tag along. Mina responds by pushing his hand away. Daddy, she whispers. Food. Pulling an exaggerated grumpy face. He glances furtively at you as she plays with a set of dog tags that hang from Lem's bat neck. I'm just chatting a little meanie. 
Give daddy a sec. He turns back to you and you suddenly notice how tired he looks. I'm not on the Havenage crew yet, but I'll work my way in. You can do it too, friend. We have to stick together. He smiles a little shakily and you wonder how long he's been working to break into the official shipyard crew. For sure. He looks out at the sidereal horizon, as if trying to pull energy from those flickering torches from the vast hull. We've got, we've got to hold out, okay? You aren't quite sure if he is talking to you. That's how it works. While he stares at Mina catches your eye curiously. Do you agree, Mina? He strains up and meets your eye. Daddy loves me, she says stubbornly, daring you to question her. A weird thing to say in response. Lem smiles and lifts Mina. That's it, we hold on. She's, he smiles sheepishly at you. We are just a couple of softies, isn't that right, Mina? He sets her down, standing by his side, and she clings to his leg. Gotta go feed this one. He pats her back. Maybe see you on the ship, huh? He turns, and they walk down the walkway, away from the shipyard. You see them talking, and then a moment later, Mina turns around and stops. See you, robot! She, her shout echoes down the walkway, and she flashes you a parting smile before running to catch up with Lem. You watch them a little before you turn back to the impossible scale to the side real horizon. Tick it out. Workers on the side real crew get entered into a draw for the colony ship's living crew. That's one way off the island into a new life. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. I'll probably go here if I need money. But that's not really what I was looking for. I was looking for something else. Ooh, traveling merchants. For my for more ship mine fragments. Some scrap traders are back here too. But what we need to do, chat, is to complete all this other stuff going on here. I don't know what I'm supposed to be using doing with a ship mind, but that's all right. It is all right. Do I join the Octagon? I actually want to disable my tracker and help uh, Bang crack Conway, so we will need to make money. This one's kind of difficult. If I use intuition, I could probably make my way through. And in order to get to the other side, we need to get 150 credits, which will take us a long time. As long as we stay alive, I think I'll be fine. So at this point, I'll need to save, I'll need to collect data. Or keep playing this. Seems like it gives you the most cryo. Playing in the tablet room. On the other hand, if I play here, I can leave my options open. If it only plays pays 12 cryo. Yeah. Let's go ahead and make ourselves some money. Can I do it again though? Oh, 
A little bit. After a good start, you lose focus blocked by an older woman with incredible position. You leave soon after, keeping some winnings. We're getting pretty close. We should be able to make enough money to get across the gap tomorrow. As soon as long as my health holds out, anyway. God, I hope my health holds out. Oh, man. Hey, these are some good rolls. Let's go ahead and get across the gap. Good. Good. And there we go. I think we're going to make it across the gap now. Hundred and fifty nine credits. A heavily tattooed spacer takes your shits and tells you to prepare. Should be waiting for at the edge for your arrival. Take the ferry across the Founder's Gap to the Greenway. We made it. We're in the Greenway. As you step out into the passageway, someone barrels into you from behind, sending you stumbling down the corridor. You turn to see an unfamiliar spacer laden with heavy gear. She steadies herself, staring you down as if daring you to respond. Sorry. She adjusts a strap. On her shoulder, holding up a hand in recognition before sitting off down the corridor. I'm sorry for her. A second spacer smiles at you apologetically. She's only on a mission, and when she's on a mission, they shrug. Not a problem. They smile. You're sweet. Eek! Esh stands further down the corridor, glowing at her friend. She chops at the air, pointing down the corridor to whatever end she's rushing to. Peek rushes, raises her, their eyebrows at you. Ash, please, do you want everyone at the station to hate us? Ash hardens. They want to hate us. They can hate. If they want to hate, they want to hate us. They can hate us. She drops her hip. I'm not exactly seeing much love as it is. We're lucky we got through before they set up the damn cordon. Cordon? Peek gestures in your direction. See, they don't even know what you're talking about. This station isn't Hawthorne. Not everyone has to follow some corporate protocol. Ash sighs. I'm not saying they are part of the administration. She jerks her head in your direction. But I'm saying we need to get these supplies to the bribe before someone starts asking questions. Can I help? Ash smiles slightly. See, Ash? Help. Isn't that exactly what we need right now? Peek. Ash rolls her eyes. Peek ignores her. We are with a few refugees. The ones heaven, heaven edge have poured off from entering the station. Ash interrupts. The ones that are being quarantined in makeshift vessels that barely made it to the eye to begin with. The ones that your station administrators have called an existential risk and are running out of supplies while their right to safety is being debated by people with no stake in their future. She quickly looks away, annoyed at her own outburst. Peak size. She's right. People are trapped out there and... They turn to Ash. We understand this is a big problem for the eye. Hundreds of refugees and more ships turning up each cycle. We hold up a handle, stop Ash interrupting, but... Ash turns away, her burning anger a palpable force in the close corners of the corridor. They need supplies, and after everything they've been through, the quarantine isn't helping. Peek finishes. That's terrible. Ash looks back at you, her fierceness fading. Peek, please, Ash could gather herself into the supplies. Ash, we need help. Just like refugees needed us, we need others too. They smile at her. Peek turns to you. Come find us. The climbing briar is docked to the broken spoke past the greenway in the waste. We have a good view of the cordon, though we are helping keeping our distance for now. Come help us. We squeeze your hand. Ash turns to leave and Peek follows, waving goodbye. A moment later, Ash sats back down the corridor. Don't bother coming empty handed. You want to help us? Show us. Bring supplies or don't come at all. And with that, they disappear around the corner. Ash already picking up speed as Peek calls for her to slow down. A refugee flotilla? 
Where are they coming from and why now? Each time you think you begin to understand this place, something changes. Man, this whole place is green. It has been well named the Greenway, hasn't it, chat? Parts of it look like a parts of it looks dead though, like this whole section here. The waste, ruined agricultural systems. Escape XPR ship. And there's this whole section over here which is completely ruined. This must be where that uh, ship crashed into the ring. I wonder how people even live out here without oxygen. The Haifa Commune, a self-sustaining community. So we need to meet Fang somewhere in the Greenway. However, we are going to go ahead and take a break for now, chat. They live off the grin. Yes, they do. Chat, thank you so much for coming to tonight's stream. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I am certainly enjoying this game, and I look forward to playing it again next Monday. This week is a little bit strange. We are also in a flux as far as events that are going to be going on. We will be having our usual outward stream this Wednesday evening. And on Friday, I'll be attempting to participate in a Guilty Gear Strive tournament. I have not decided whether or not to stream that. I will decide by Friday. Otherwise, expect us to have our usual Deus Ex stream on Friday evening. Time for us citizen to be a sleeper. You bet. I need to have a little bit of sleeping myself. But before that, let's go ahead and find someone to raid. Who will be our next victim? A lot of people are streaming on Monday evening for once, and you don't see that very often. Hmm. There's certainly no Darth of people that we could possibly raid, but I think we will visit Jackie Chan tonight. Let's make sure they're not ending their stream anytime soon. They're playing DBD. Oh, they have such a cute avatar. Very adorable. And it's live 2D too. I wonder if they did that themselves. Jackie Chan is one of my fighting game comrades. Like they're playing the uh, killer right now in Dead by Daylight. Let us go pop over to say hello. For tonight's raid message, let's uh, keep it the usual. Oh wow, six viewers tonight? Very nice. You all are so generous. <laughs> Please use any emoji that you would prefer, but for tonight's stream, we are doing, or for tonight's raid message, we are doing Citizen Raid. Or something like that. <laughs> I'll give you all a little bit of time to copy it down, to set your own emojis, and then we'll get going. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you once again for visiting. I will see you next time. When they come out, I'll bunk. Bunk, bunk, bunk. Tonk. I didn't call me. Thank you, though.